welcome to Sisters and Company Talking About It live show. Hosted by me, Dr. Sharon Cradle, and Sherelle Higgins. We will be discussing intriguing, intricate, inspirational, informative, and intelligent topics with our individual twists and talents. We will present real stories, real solutions, and engage in real talk. So we invite you to be our company every Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock p.m. as we focus on transcendent thinking that will move you forward. You become the company you keep. What company do you keep? Oh yeah, we are Biological Sisters by way of the south side of Chicago. So get ready to keep company with us and our guests as we talk about it. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to Sisters and Company Talking About It live show. We are so excited to be with you today and that you have decided to join us, even all of our followers on our social media platforms. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And today, what an opportunity for us to talk about black history talk about something that I think is gonna be so intriguing to most of you and that you can relate to, is cracking the organizational climate and culture code with our guest, Nicole Turner, and of course, with our lovely honorary co-host, Walita Hawkins. <laughs> yes, and so Sherelle is away with her boy, um, and so, like she said last, she, last week, she's the favorite co-host. I'm going to steal that line today since she is not with us. I am the oldest of this dynamic duo and the favorite. Can I be the favorite today? <laughs> I know. So as uh, most of you all heard last week, um, I started a new journey. And I just want to talk about that just a little bit. Um, I am um, commuting, as my husband said, to Boston during the week to be the Vice President of Organizational Culture and Learning and Development um, for Simmons University in Boston. And it is a female, from what I understand, it's called female focused <laughs> school where, you know, majority of the students there are female. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But so many people have reached out to me and they've just been saying words like, that's inspiring, wow, right, happy for you. And let me tell you something, one of the things that I've learned in life is that you have to get outside of your comfort zone yeah. because comfort is a zone, right? Mm -hmm. And that zone, I wrote down some things, is like rooted in fear, is rooted in you know, your ability to not continue to learn and your ability to not continue to grow, right? And so once you're in that zone, if you can overcome the fear, that's where the learning and growth happens. And we are here for a purpose. And so I call this journey in my life, destiny has called and I'm mission focused. Destiny has called and I'm mission focused. And so I can't, began to even tell you that I could not have written this story for myself in terms of how it happened, when it happened, and everything that has come together. And so thank you all for your support. Um, thank my husband for his support. Thank my girlfriend, Walita, my sister friend, who actually went to Boston with me and helped me get straight. <laughs> and so it's just been a journey, and I'll, keep, I'll continue to keep you... Um, um, updated on that experience. And there are some things that's happening there. And it's not about just what I'll be able to do for Simmons. It's what I've already learned. And someone asked me um, yesterday, actually, you know, how's the experience? And I said, I'm honored. That's a word, right? Mm -hmm. To be honored to yeah. go work for somebody. I'm just right. truly <laughs> honored to be in the work. Right. Because the work is something that I have a passion for and everything that I do is around organizational learning and culture and it's also about helping people to grow. Mm -hmm. So I just see um, so many opportunities and I just see the spirit of the Lord and God's hand in all of it. So uh, I'm excited. So I'll keep you all posted on that journey. So you know, I normally start with scripture but I really want to start a little different today. Um, I want to start with, <laughs> I 
the lyrics from a song that was sang in church today. And I know all of you, you know, old school church going people know this song. <laughs> and it's called, I Got a Testimony. And what it says is, as I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony, right? And then it says, sometimes I couldn't see my way through, but the Lord, he brought me out. And so this is what we want to talk about leading into um, the topics that we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about Black History Moment, and then we're going to talk about, you know, these organizational experiences that we've had that we've been led out. But my husband is sitting here, most of you all know, he's the singer in the family. And I told him <laughs> that I was gonna sing a tune. He was like, don't do that. But I'm doing it anyway, cause right? Because one of the things our pastor talked about today is that most people can only see the mountains, right? <laughs> what can you see? I can see me hear myself singing in tune. I've got a testimony. Mm, 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 I've got a testimony. <laughs> the Lord has been good to me. That's all See, I got. That don't sound, that That's all sound I got. Good. Hey. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I don't think he wanted you to upstage. Huh? That's right. So how many of you all got a testimony? Listen. And that's where I want to start because this is Black History Month, mm -hmm. but to me, Black history is every, every day, day because day. the world couldn't even exist without black history. history. Right. And so um, I want to talk a little bit about some words that come to mind. And I want to bring Nicole in and bring Walida in on this conversation. When I think about black history, I think about a lot of things. It's, it's, it's so much that it just brings chills to me. It just makes me stand up my shoulders straight, mm -hmm. my head up high, because I just know how great and dynamic our ancestors were yes. so that we can be great and dynamic. That's right. I don't know how you feel about that. Oh, I feel amazing. Yes. When I think right. about black history, I think about empowerment. I think about mm -hmm. foundation, because it's mm -hmm. a foundation for everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just, there would be, as you said, there would be nothing without black history. Exactly. Yeah. Foundation, that's what she said. Foundation and tradition. And mm -hmm. tradition. You know, the traditions that we have to stand on the shoulders of our, our founders. Exactly. You know? And if anybody wants to participate in this conversation, please give us a call at 833-202-8255. 833-202-8255. And all of our social media followers, you know, if you all want to add something to, you know, what do you think about when you think about black history? You know, just add it to the, um, to the post and we'll read it, okay? But I also think about family. Mm -hmm. yeah, sacrifice. 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 Definitely sacrifice. sacrifice. Faith, <clears throat> strength, courage, mm -hmm. freedom, perseverance. I could go on. <laughs> Gifted and talented, mm -hmm. greatness, because I think about our ancestors. I can't even imagine what was in their minds. No. But to see where we are today because of the sacrifices that they made with Lita, mm -hmm. They knew, and I wrote this down, our ancestors knew the truth and that the truth would set them free. Absolutely. Right? Yes. They knew the truth and that the truth would set them free. Right. And one of the t one tagline on my book says, shift the mindset and the view will change. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. how that's I envisioned right. them, them, right? That's I envisioned right. that that's they right. were able to master their mindsets and they shifted that view mm -hmm. of the circumstances that mm -hmm. they were in so that their vision would change about what was possible in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's how we should roll. Mm -hmm. That's how we should, em we should embody that same type of mindset about why we're here on earth. And we're not here just for us, mm -hmm. right? We're here so that the next generations coming along can have something to, to touch yes. that we left. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I absolutely agree with that. And when I think about the history of the people who came before me, and I think about all the the black businesses and the millionaires we had yes. back then, mm -hmm. and I was like, if they can do that with everything that was coming up against them, there is no excuse for us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when you use the word persevere, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. definitely is something they had. Mm -hmm. And faith. And that faith. Mm -hmm. and, and we just had um, Carol, who was recently on the show, she said it's a legacy of strength 
resilience and resourcefulness. Mm -hmm. That's what equals mm -hmm. black history, history. to yes. her. That's right. And, Walida? and then um, also the sacrifice that they made, it wasn't just for them at that moment. Correct. You know, their mm -hmm. view, like you said, the mindset and that view changed. And so when they, when they sacrificed everything they did for us, they had those coming behind That's them right. in mind. Mm -hmm. right. you know? And so we can't sleep on everything that they did for us, the we right can't. to vote. And then when they came over here as slaves, they weren't slaves. They were millionaires right. and kings right. and queens. queens and, 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 and you know, everybody and... has this mindset that, exactly. oh, they bought us over here and we were slaves. No, mm -hmm. we were doctors <laughs> and lawyers yep. and millionaires and kings and queens. Yes. And we can't let we that legacy exactly. die. Right. And we cannot you know, they let have it a die. legacy for us. And we can't let it die. That's right. Absolutely. And so um, Walida asked earlier, was I going to talk about Gail King, the Gail King Snoop Dogg situation? I said, you know, I don't know if I really want to waste my time, but this is what I want to say. And then you all can say whatever you want to say. I said, let the improvement of yourself keep you busy that you have no time to criticize others. That's right. That's it. Yep. If you're Period. focused <laughs> <Period>. <laughs> on your own improvement, right, then you have no, no room to really start criticizing others. Mm -hmm. And so this is the deal. We have got to learn to treat each other. We can have respectful discourse. That's so right. that's what I'll say. We all make mistakes. You know, intentional or unintentional, mm -hmm. we, we do. Yeah. But it's about how we communicate with each yes. other. And if we have, you know, something that we've done wrong and we need correction, there is a way to correct, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And so I just think that we have to learn that. And when we start talking about organizational culture, you know, one of the um, tenets is that whole communication, communication and how it. you communicate, mm -hmm. right? And so, but we have to do that for each other because leading back to Black History Month, we have to make sure that we're on the same path, mm -hmm. you know, have the same mindset about how we're going to hold each other accountable, that's we're right. going to love each other, but mm -hmm. we're going to do it in a way that's respectful yeah. and that is beneficial to the conversation. Mm -hmm. And what would you all say? I, I think that's true. I think that's true. And I think, um, you know, just looking at social media and then everybody's... Um, input about the situation and and whether like i read this long um post about um cbs set gail up to ask the question and all that but i don't think all of that matters i think what matters is like you said communication and respect mm -hmm. um you know the to each, each his own to mm -hmm. each his own exactly. just respectfulness um mm -hmm. you know and and we do it to ourselves you know, we do it to ourselves, and that's the sad part about it. Um, but we, if you master, but if you master your mindset, mm -hmm. you you will understand that, right? Mm -hmm. You'll understand that words matter. My husband right. always talks to me about what well, you know, words really matter. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. <laughs> so, words matter, and we have to practice. It's an art. Art. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. We don't always get it right. That's not what mm -hmm. I'm saying. But we have to practice trying to get it right mm -hmm. and being able to share what we're feeling and thinking without tearing somebody else down. Mm -hmm. Nicole. And then the platform. In oh. the platform, mm -hmm. exactly. Right. And I think as a culture, we as black people have to, you know, like back in the day they would say what happened in the house stayed in the house. Right? <laughs> and, and we have this habit sometimes of putting our own personal black yes. laundry out there yes. for other people mm -hmm. to see. Yes. Um, I I can't imagine what Gail is going through. Um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was listening to somebody who said, at some point you have to make a decision between integrity over the bag. Mm -hmm. And he <laughs> used the acronym CBS. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> And I thought that was that That's was clever. that was very clever. very clever. Yeah, mm -hmm. but as a culture, we have to, at some point, make decisions that are not tearing each other mm -hmm. down. There are so many things I could say, but right. I would prefer not so to let say. Me, and yeah. let me tell you, yeah. this really leads to me and to something that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. This whole topic of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. It is. I think it's just necessary. 
if you don't know anything about it, study it a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, so what it talks about is recognizing your own emotions, mm -hmm. right? Your own feelings, feelings, and recognizing the feelings and emotions of someone else, mm -hmm. and then right. how do you respond, respond to that? To that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I believe that we really need to practice because when people lash out, when people do things, that's the behaviors coming out in me. Mm -hmm. There is something they're giving you a, a message, right? And so I told my husband, I said, you know, I can't even imagine what black men thought about that whole thing, but the, the, the ugliness and all of that that came out told me a story, mm -hmm. right? That they, they're, you know, they feel like they get beat up by the world mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and negative things are said about them, but then when it comes to us as black women, they need us to kind of be there to support them. And I'm not right. opening this up for a debate. Right. Just not doing it. <laughs> the only thing I'm doing is just, just trying to have a you know, conversation. Just a little conversation. Right. Right. And, I, and I think it's a loaded conversation. It is. It is. That we need to have. And you all already know that I'm having my fifth annual Woman Thou Art Great Women Sharpening Women Conference on March the 28th. And I keep talking to, and well, the, t the theme is greatness is in your DNA. And our focus is going to be on mother and daughter relationships. But I keep putting it out there to my quality assurance team that I need to have men involved at some point mm -hmm. because, you know, men that want to be involved, because a lot of men have said to me, we want to come, we want to be involved. <laughs> you know, trying to bring them in in a right way. And I think mm -hmm. we're in a, at a time now that we perhaps mm -hmm. can start trying to bring men in to have the conversation because if they can listen to us and understand who we are somewhat and mm -hmm. we can listen to them and understand who they are somewhat, I just mm -hmm. think that we can just do better mm -hmm. together. Right. That's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And I also think when you're talking about mother daughter relationships, those are interesting within themselves. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot ignore the daughter father relationship. Exactly. That's right. I'm Maybe a, that's a great way to I'm, bring them I'm in. a daddy's girl. My daddy's <laughs> yes. my my everything. Yes. However, we have seen, and even though this is, you know, also Valentine's and love, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen that a woman's relationship with her father mm, or the absence thereof mm -hmm. plays a very big role in her relationship with men yeah, in that's general. True. Yes. That's so true. I Absolutely. think when you're talking about mother daughter, you should also think about talking about daughter and father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's you true. just that's gave it. me that's you just gave me something good. because <laughs> I was trying to think about how do we bring them in, and you know, um, mm -hmm. on the heels of. Kobe and his daughter's death, mm -hmm. you know, we know that that hashtag girl, girl dad, dad. Mm -hmm. is going around, which I think is so powerful. Mm -hmm. And so m maybe that's something we can play off of just to bring some positivity to the fathers because there are more fathers mm -hmm. in these daughters' lives than, yeah. than the media oh, and yeah. statistics right. would want that's you right. to believe. Mm -hmm. And there's some good dads out here. A lot of good, good dads out here. I'm talking yes. about my black men. Yes. Yep. Powerful. <laughs> doing mm -hmm. the thing, right? Yes. And so. Um, so I just wanted to really talk about that. So what is my black history moment? I want you all, and I already told you that it's every day, because I live in black skin every day, mm -hmm. you know, I walk in that world every day, <laughs> and, and I'm good with it, day. right? Yeah. And I believe I'm blessed to be a black woman, mm -hmm. um, and that's a conversation for another day. Um, but, and Gwen Eiffel, mm -hmm. um, I don't know how many people really knew who Gwen Eiffel was, and when you say her name, people are like, Mm, I think I've heard that name before, mm -hmm. but how is that connected to what I'm doing? At Simmons University, it's an all-girls school, and guess what? That's where Gwen Eiffel graduated from. Oh. She was an undergraduate there, nice. and if you all are not familiar with the forever stamp that just came mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. I meant to bring mine mm -hmm. so I can show them to you. She is on the forever stamp, yeah. Gwen Eiffel. Mm -hmm. Now, Gwen Eiffel, that is, to me, um, that's just powerful. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, I want you all to Google the forever stamp with Gwen Eiffel, the photo is beautiful, mm -hmm. right? They took care to make sure that when they represented her on that stamp, she looked good. So she was, she's a graduate of Simmons University and they have an entire college named after her, the School of Journalism and Communication, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. I mean, just beautifully um, set up. And so they did, they honored her my second day at. Simmons and I and she was an honorary <laughs> Delta so she is a soror so all these sorors were there and just all of the accolades that people gave her because if you have to think about 
when she was there, she was there in the 70s, mm -hmm. right? And she became a journalist in the 70s at the Boston Globe. That's where she started. And so when you think about what was going on in the 70s, that can kind of tell you or help you to imagine <laughs> her struggle, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. But again, we talked about courage, perseverance, strength, and mm -hmm. she exuded all that. And she exuded excellence mm -hmm. in everything that she did. And she was also a mentor, I found out, to so many women. Although she was tired and she didn't have not one more minute, they were like, <laughs> she never, never said no, right? Because she was mm -hmm. reaching back, trying mm -hmm. to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's okay? what it's about. So we know she was an American journalist, um, a TV newscaster and an author. She was the first woman of African descent to host a nationally te televised U.S. public affairs program with Washington Weekly, mm. um, the Washington Weekly in review. Um, she had the PBS News Hour. She worked for the Washington Post. She was from New York City. And she died in 2016 from cancer, mm. breast cancer and endometrial cancer. Mm. Um, and so this woman, when we think about you know, your birth date on your tombstone and mm -hmm. your death date, that dash, that's exactly what I was mm -hmm. thinking about when I was doing my research on Gwen, um, her, her dash, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so that's where I am in life. What is, what is it gonna, what's, what's my dash, dash gonna be? Mm -hmm. And although Gwen was a notable person in black history, there are black people who are notable in your family. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. I thought, started thinking about my grandfather coming over here today, thinking about, oh, that was a notable man mm -hmm. to come out of the, out of Yazoo City, Mississippi, mm -hmm. you know, in the 20s. Yeah. On yeah. the, yeah. you know, I guess he hid on the, on the train, you know, and went up north, you know, to get away from lynchings and mm -hmm. all of that. The mm -hmm. courage, the strength, the perseverance, and to raise his family in the city of Chicago and do all that he did. And it, I'm thinking he was notable. Mm -hmm. So I want you all to think about, we always talk about the people that's in black, history, mm -hmm. you know, that are notable people, but think about your family members, yes. you know, who also have made black history. Mm -hmm. You all want to add anything to that? Yeah, like when I think about my grandfather, uh, J.L. Turner, <laughs> we always wonder, what was his real name? <laughs> <laughs> he was an entrepreneur, like mm -hmm. he owned a plumbing business. Mm -hmm. And I remember as a little girl hearing different people talk about, oh, let's call Mr. Turner and let's get Mr. Turner. And he was so respected in the community. Exactly. And, and so I think being an entrepreneur, the vision started oh, for me goodness. back mm -hmm. then. Yes. And watching what he had to go through, um, the challenges, being from Mississippi, mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't we always- We might be related. <laughs> <laughs> Mississippi girl. Yeah, it was it wasn't always it wasn't always welcomed. Right. But he was good at what he did and just to watch him, even when he had the challenges, to watch him still be an awesome businessman. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is inspiring to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about um and then I'll let you say something with lead. I was thinking about I think I saw Dr. Avis online and she was telling a story about her father actually mm -hmm. who I think owned the first lumber yard mm -hmm. down in like the like southern Virginia area mm -hmm. right and when you think about you know during mm -hmm. those times right and and I was thinking even further I said now if her father what owned the lumber yard and your grandfather then the people that came before them what did they, they do? do right right right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. exactly <laughs> yeah i think about my grandfather james alexander mcneil he was the um president of the community um college heights credit union oh um, wow and so he walked every day from our house up the street to the um credit union and i he just celebrated his birthday February the 1st and just um, reading the comments, you know, from the, the guys and the ladies that grew up, you know, in our neighborhood saying what an influence um, Mr. McNeil, you know, had on their lives. And um, he was just an awesome man, you mm -hmm. know, very well respected um, mm -hmm. in Fayetteville, North Carolina. That's right. And, hey. you know, we're and all of us have Fayetteville those State. stories, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we all do. And, and we have to learn your history. Like we had a family reunion um, last summer 
and I had a cousin that did the ancestry DNA. You know, learn your history mm -hmm. because it's important so we can tell our children and they can tell their mm -hmm. children's children, you exactly. know, so it's important. And I, and I also challenge people, what type of black history are you going to make? Mm -hmm. Because wow, um, really, and, and that's it, so that when people are sitting here 100 years from now mm -hmm. and they're thinking about us or they're our family members, they can say, we at least tried to do something to leave our mark on right, black history, right. to expand mm -hmm. black history. And when I think about Simmons, um, I told them, I, you know, I, I need to write things down and get it copyrighted. I told them at Simmons, I said, hashtag, it's, it's a good time to be at Simmons. <laughs> because their first female president, who was there for 12 years, is retiring. Mm -hmm. They just announced that they're hiring a new female president African-American female who happens to be a graduate of North Carolina uh, A&T State mm -hmm. University, mm -hmm. and she's a soror. Mm -hmm. Her name is Dr. Nicole. I'm just saying. That's <laughs> awesome. Right. Right. History. Right. History. Hey. History. You know? I, and I'm just so excited. I can't hardly contain myself to be a part. And when I tell you I'm honored, that's what I'm talking about, to be to go there and help to do whatever we're called there to do, mm -hmm. right? We, you know, I see way past what, what it says on my job description. Mm -hmm. And so I am excited and honored to just have that opportunity. So what type of black history are you going to make? Hmm. Challenge yourself, think yes. about it, mm -hmm. right? Are you the first author in your family? I think I am the see? first author. I yes. think so. Yes. Yeah, but I'm, when you mentioned the dash, every day I'm, not every day, but for the most part, I'm always thinking about what does that dash yeah. mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I try to reflect on, because I truly believe we're here to be of service to other people. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And mm -hmm. in everything that I do, I try to have an impact on somebody else. Mm -hmm. Not so I can get the glory for it, because it's not about me, right. Right. but it's really about taking a look at something and wanting to, to shift the narrative. Exactly. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who's a developer just yesterday. And I was like, you know, I was thinking about my hometown because at some point, you know, my parents may no longer want to live in their house. So one's not here mm -hmm. and they're ones by themselves. My hometown doesn't have places for senior citizens to live who are still very active. Oh, wow. When I did oh, a wow. Google search, it was yes. all nursing homes. And I was like, well, they're not nursing home people. Right. 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 So now I'm like, oh, right. you know, we need to invest yes. in building right. communities mm -hmm. because we're living yes. longer. African-Americans are living yes. longer. We're healthier, mm -hmm. longer in life. And so now everything I do, I think about... What's the impact going to be, and mm -hmm. who can I bless as I'm as I'm doing it? Right. Mm -hmm. And you know how awesome that is. I was reading something about Martin Luther King the other day, and and he talked about this concept of a beloved community. Mm -hmm. And when you just said that, that's what we're that you know is. that's what we're yeah. talking about mm -hmm. going back because everybody who gets old don't need to go into a right. nursing exactly. home, right? And so what mm -hmm. happens with our beloved community mm -hmm. if we're not helping to build that up? Mm -hmm. I think that's just powerful. Yeah. And I wasn't going to talk about this, but I just have to tell you all about the Soul Train Cruise <laughs> <laughs> because it's, it's relevant. It so is. the history mm -hmm. of the Soul Train Cruise, and we all, you know, in our age group, grew up watching Soul Train. Mm -hmm. But what was dynamic and profound to me is that I think my husband and I probably were some of the youngest ones on the cruise. Wow. Um, most of the, I think the average age was upper 60s, early 70s, mm -hmm. those folks. And I'm going to tell you something. They were snatched. <laughs> <laughs> they were walking around. <laughs> they looked good. They were partying. That's why I was trying to stay up past 9 o'clock because them people were <laughs> up <laughs> partying. And they were so nice and so wonderful. And then to be able to experience our legends while they're mm -hmm. still alive. Mm -hmm. I told my husband, I said, when the Jacksons were up there, it was Tito, Marlon, and Jackie. Mm -hmm. But I had to Google how old they were. Right. I mean, seriously, <laughs> because I, the way they were moving, is, I was looking at them like, okay, really? But <laughs> in Ron Isley and, yeah. you know, people, I mean, it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about our beloved community, when we think about taking care of ourselves and seniors, mm -hmm. that's a place on the Soul Train Cruise where you will see so many mm -hmm. African Americans that are doing well and they're up in their 70s and 80s mm -hmm. and still getting around, still in their right minds, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of themselves. And even the ones that were on walkers mm -hmm. and wheelchairs, <laughs> they were still they're in their grooving. right minds. Mm -hmm. They're having a good time. 
And there was this one couple, I forgot, I think they were celebrating 67 years of marriage. Wow. And they've been on every Soul Train cruise by themselves, (laughs) walking around. Girl, we started chanting, free cruise, free cruise. <laughs> they should Let's have a free, free cruise. cruise. Yes. Right, right. And honey, it was just so powerful. So that's our history. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we're just some good looking people. I'm like, yeah, hey, we are. hey, I'm we just going to say it. Yes. You know, and that's why it's so important for us to take care of ourselves because mm-hmm. we're some good looking people. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and some blessed people. <laughs> it's just not all about the physical outside. It's right. about you know, doing that work on the inside so mm-hmm. you can just be beautiful all the way around. Mm-hmm. Right? That's right. And so it was just profound. Met a couple who, I think one was 70 and one was 70. They were both in their 70. They just mm-hmm. got married. Oh, oh wow. It's all still right. hopeful. Yeah. It's still yeah. hope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was beautiful. And I was looking at them and she was so spry and so just so <laughs> wonderful. And she was just giving him life. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at them like, this is what I'm That's talking about. <laughs> Like, yeah, Ira, let's fist a bump, you know, fist bump, <laughs> you know, because, honey, it, it, it's, it's still possible. Wow. And it's all about mm-hmm. what your mindset is and what mm-hmm. you decide mm-hmm. in terms of your relationships. And so let's talk about relationships because we all have relationships with these companies we work with, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> with organizations. And so that is what we're here to talk about. The second half of this show is about. Our, our, you all, I don't know if you all remember Nicole being on the show. I think it was the first year mm-hmm. of, our, um, of our show, mm-hmm. and Nicole did a, um, a documentary mm-hmm. on what men want oh, in relationships. Yeah. It was powerful. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just so proud of Nicole. And now she yeah. has um, written a book, authored a book, mm-hmm. Cracking the Organization mm-hmm. Climate and Cultural Code. Mm. I just think that was profound. And I told Nicole, I said, when I think about what's happening in, in the world politically, in our country mm-hmm. politically, and then what I do in my work from an HR perspective and an organizational development perspective, I thought her book would be powerful. Mm-hmm. So introduce yourself again to the audience, Nicole, and tell us the why what do you do and then the why behind okay. authoring that book? And let me see the book so I can hold it up so people can see it. <laughs> So I'm Nicole Turner, and in addition to being the Director of Employee Engagement and Culture Transformation for Federal Agency, I also have an organizational culture consulting company, hashtag the culture doctor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And what, what led me to even studying organizational culture Many years ago, I started working with individuals on their mental and emotional toxins and the things that were preventing them from flourishing in life Mm -hmm. and the impact that it has on every aspect of their life. And then I realized there's there's a correlation between the brokenness of individuals and the brokenness of organizations. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so- Say that that again, because I don't think people really get that. I think people, something you can tell me if you agree or disagree, but I think people think organizations are this thing. No, organizations are the people that are within the organization. People are the organization. organization. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, I think Richard Branson says it best when he said, if you take care of the people, the people will take care of the mission. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's Mm -hmm. one of, I love some of his quotes. Yes. And so in studying this whole organizational climate and culture, one deals with the behaviors of the organization and one deals with the environment in which the behaviors take place. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And when you touched on emotional intelligence, what I find when we're dealing with leadership in particular Mm -hmm. is that the mistake that some organizations make mm-hmm. is just because I'm a great techie yes. does not mean that I have the capability of leading, leading people. people. Right. Come on. And the mm-hmm. higher up you go in mm-hmm. the leadership chain, the less technical you need to know, That's right. the mm-hmm. more you need to be able to empower, Lead. inspire, yes. motivate, coach, mentor, Mm -hmm. and make people want to follow you. Mm -hmm. Correct. And Mm -hmm. so in cracking the whole organizational climate and culture code, it write it reads a lot like my self help books, yes. which is like a conversation, mm-hmm. which was something I did not want to deviate from, but I wanted to give you enough nuggets that you can pick it up and take it and implement what you have read in the book. And so let's let me stop you for a second because you said something at the very beginning. I think 
from an educator standpoint that we need to dig into just a little bit to make sure people understand. Okay. You, you talked about organizational climate and culture, and you said one is for this and one is for that. Break that down a little bit more so that when people walk away, they understand mm -hmm. that there is a difference between climate and right. culture mm -hmm. and which one is which. So a good way for me to th have you think about organizational climate, I asked the question, what's the weather like in your organization? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the way that I want you to think about the culture is how are you behaving mm -hmm. in that weather? If exactly. it's a storm mm -hmm. within your organization, are you adding the lightning, the wind, or are you adding the calm mm. yes. to that wow. storm? Mm -hmm. And that's how I put it in layman's terms to help you differentiate between climate mm -hmm. and culture. The people make up the culture. And yes. within the organization of culture, there are a lot of subcultures. Yes, we can it take is. it back to archaeological times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when we talk about <laughs> cultures within cultures, cultures within, within cultures. cultures. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how you can have a leader of an organization that is pushing a certain values yes and mm -hmm. we'll talk about these core values that yes. a lot of these organizations don't know what their values are right. but then mm -hmm. you want me to be on board with your mission exactly. and vision exactly that's another subject and and Ooh. to me from the hr perspective organizational development perspective i think that's where you have to start mm -hmm. with your core values yes. and when mm -hmm. you start looking at who you're going to hire right mm -hmm. what is the ideal employee look like right. for organization X, Y, or Z, it's all connected to your core it, values. It is. Right. And I remember once asking uh, the CFO of an organization what his values were, and he had no answer. Right. Mm. And that in itself spoke volumes to me mm -hmm. about your ability to move forward mm -hmm. when you don't even know what With you value. Exactly. I remember a consultant that I was working with said to me that LinkedIn is one of his clients. And the head of LinkedIn, one of his main values is compassion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with everything that you see yes. throughout LinkedIn, compassion is the center. Mm -hmm. right. And I think a lot of organizations, exactly. if they don't have their center, exactly. that is disruptive to every tenant that comes out of that center. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's so important to understand what your core values are in an organization. And HR in itself, and there's a chapter, the last chapter in the book, that right. focuses on HR's role in defining the that's culture right. exactly. in an organization. Exactly, and, and helping the culture to define mm -hmm. their, their, their values, right, and yes. what their culture is going to be. Yes. Because HR should be everywhere they should. working with yes. every department to make sure that we all understand you know, where we're going in this organization mm -hmm. and, how, and right. how we want it to feel, what we want it to look like. Yes. And I believe and, that's our role. And that yeah. also means that HR has to take a deeper dive within itself yes. and move from transactional to, to transformational. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Because HR has been seen as a transactional Actional, function correct. for so long mm -hmm. until you're not really playing the role you should be playing mm -hmm. in making transformation happen. Right. And I believe that is what I love about what I do because I think when I say organizational development and learning, people are like, huh? <laughs> 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 what? What is that? And so because I live between both worlds, mm -hmm. right? You know, I, I have this strong, you know, expert expertise in HR, but I also have this strong expertise and experience in organizational development and learning. And I believe that if the organization is not continuing to develop and learn, mm -hmm. right, people learning, systems improving, yes. mm -hmm. right, um, communication becoming clearer and, and focused, if, if we're not doing that, mm -hmm. then um, the organization can't grow, mm -hmm. right? No. But, and, and we're not even a for-profit, you know, most of us don't even work for for-profit right. organizations. So what, is, what does growth look like, mm -hmm. you know, to a federal government agency, right? And I think that's where I live in that between both worlds and leadership and HR, and I love it because mm -hmm. it's a pivotal um, concept and a pivotal expertise that if you have that background that you can really make um, improvements in mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think leadership, the leadership mm -hmm. style, Mm -hmm. makes a difference in the organizational culture as well. Oh, yes. yes. When oh, I'm peeking yes. in your yes. book, I, I, I section saw on you that. had a section yes. in that. And I, think, <laughs> and I think that's one of the disadvantages in a lot of organizations that are struggling mm -hmm. um, because you have leaders in place who don't know their leadership style and don't mm -hmm. understand 
the role of the leaders, you know, don't understand the impact that the leadership mm -hmm. style has on the culture of the organization. And so, Nicole, I, I want to ask you this based on what Walida just said. We talk about leadership style a lot, and I've pivoted a little bit from leadership style because I believe that you have to have some core values in terms of who you are. Mm -hmm. And so when I do leadership development, I go from the inside out. Mm -hmm. You know, who are you, you know, as, as a leader, mm -hmm. right? What, what are your strengths? What do you bring to the table? Because I truly believe that leadership is situational. It is. It is. And, but you, as a, as a person, should not change your values and you know your the core right. of who you are as a leader but you have to meet your leadership has to change based on who's sitting in front of you mm -hmm. is that does that make sense yes it does because we're in 2020 and we now have five generations in the workforce correct mm -hmm. and you can't talk to the gen z or engage with engage. the gen z the same way you may engage with the baby boomer. Right. And right. if you're working in a nonprofit arena, creativity and innovation right. is, is key. key. And a lot of times, if it's government related, they are usually years behind the private sector when it comes years. to technology <laughs> and creati creativity and innovation. And sometimes they are creativity and innovation averse. Like, oh my gosh, you want us to take risks. And so when we think about making change happen, it's also, as you always say, it's a mindset shift it that is. has to take mm -hmm. place with leaders who it are does. sitting in front of a group of people and thinking that there's a one size fits all for every individual that yeah. I am responsible exactly. for. Exactly. And it's not. No. And it's not. And they want you to rise to the occasion, mm -hmm. you know, as the employee to their leadership style. Mm -hmm. Well, that is old school. Mm -hmm. And you have so many different people. When I do coaching, I, I try to figure out, you know, who the person is mm -hmm. that I'm coaching, the core mm -hmm. who they are. And then I start making plans around how am I going to help them to develop? Mm -hmm. Because some things they're just not going to do right. because it's not natural in terms it's of who they right. are. You know, you can give them, they're not comfortable, you know, being direct, you know, mm -hmm. you know doing what they have to do. And, and so it just depends on who it is. And so... I try to make sure that people understand that there are some core characteristics about leadership for you as a person, how you enter the room, how you show up in the world, but your leadership really should be situational mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. what's happening. Mm -hmm. You wanted to say something like that? No, I was, I was going to say, and it's also important for leaders to have a team of people mm -hmm. yes. to oh, have yes. the skill sets and the characteristics yep. that they don't possess. Like mm -hmm. you were saying, mm -hmm. it's what's inside of you. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not a direct person and I have, you know, certain areas that I need help in, it's important for my team, my mm -hmm. leadership team, you know, to be able to, your whole team needs to form that entire circle cool. and then you'll be able to help develop the organizational culture. You know, it just can't be one driven by one side or one person. And I believe that the leader in that scenario has to be confident yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and good mm -hmm. with who they are as a person as well as a right. leader mm -hmm. in order to invite different strengths mm -hmm. into their team. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. My specialty is going in and identifying the toxicities in work environments yes. and detoxing organizations. And when you talk about the leadership team, the mistake that some leaders make and why the toxic toxicities continue to manifest itself is that instead of hiring people and having people on their leadership team who think differently, right? Mm -hmm. And having those people Everybody, who, yeah. who uh, where, yes. I'm, where I'm weak, you, you are, are strong. strong. Right. Exactly. They look for the affinities and the people who are very similar. Yeah. Right. And one of the things that's very difficult that for them is to be self-aware and have accountability mm -hmm. and admit mm -hmm. to themselves that I am weak in this area and mm -hmm. I need a teammate right. who is strong in this area. Mm -hmm. And if everybody on the team is saying yes mm. to on. things that somebody should be saying Ooh, no, no to, to. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a sinking ship. Exactly. It may take years for it to sink, but I guarantee See, you that every sink. single day <laughs> the holes down. are getting bigger. It's, it's a slow <laughs> leak, but it doesn't mean that the leak is not taking place. Mm -hmm. And so two things. That goes back to that organizational climate and culture that you were talking about, mm -hmm. right? In terms of, you know, what they expect and, and what they, you know, everybody has to look the same, talk the same. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's a, it mm -hmm. is a recipe for disaster. Yes, it is. But the other thing is, I, it brings me to, I was hiring someone 
And I said to um, the powers that be, they were like, well, who, what are you looking for? I said, I'm looking for somebody that's intelligent, that can come in, that I don't have to sit down and mm -hmm. take them step by step in the world of work that I was doing. I said, and I need them to be dynamic, mm -hmm. right? And I just kept going on, and people were looking at me just odd. And at the end of that conversation, <laughs> somebody said, well, aren't you gonna be afraid that they'll take your job? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I said, because I'm going somewhere at some time, right. and when I leave, I wanna leave this place better than I found yeah. it. So I'm not yep. intimidated by that person coming in. How are you gonna take my job? I said, first of all, it doesn't even make sense. Right. That you're just gonna take my job. <laughs> but, <laughs> but my point was, But no, that's the mindset. Yeah, I'm very people. comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the mindset. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I just left that job. Listen. And I left somebody dynamic, capable. <laughs> <laughs> right. They're ready to transition mm -hmm. so that the organization and all the work that I put into mm -hmm. that organization didn't go down the drain. Mm -hmm. right? And that's another thing. I, you know, You're not the single stop of exactly. failure or success. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. Because those employees and that organization, um, they, they counted on the work that I did. Mm -hmm. So if I leave, why would I want all that blood, sweat, and tears, mm -hmm. so to speak, to just go in, in mm -hmm. down the drain. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so that's the kind of cultures that we need to try to, try to build mm -hmm. up as employees. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I always say when I'm hiring people, mm -hmm. um, there are two goals, one of two goals. You're either going to be so good that you're going to leave me because other people are going to want you, mm -hmm. or you're going to be so good that you're going to push me out. Mm -hmm. and but but the, the thing in the middle is that they're going to be so good that they don't want to leave yeah they work for a leader that's so good. <laughs> in an organization i'm serious in yeah. an organization yeah. they mm -hmm. don't want to leave but mm -hmm. you're building up to leave. but that's that's yeah. important yeah, yeah exactly. because i i do try to create an environment mm -hmm. where i'm practicing what i preach yes mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um because we know even in childhood People, you can tell your kids a million things, but what they're going to follow is the behavior yes. that you model. <laughs> yeah. And so the same is true in the workplace. Yes. You know, you can mm -hmm. talk a good game, but it's mm -hmm. really about what you model. And and so I'm I'm happy that most of the people who worked for me have either left right. their job to open their own business yes. or went on to other agencies mm -hmm. and they're doing dynamic things mm -hmm. and I'm still in contact with all of them mm -hmm. because That's of good. the foundation that it, yep. that existed there. So when you when you write about organizational culture, let's talk about the culture piece. Mm -hmm. What are some key characteristics or ingredients that you find to um, be important mm -hmm. in order for an organization to thrive? So it's important to have, and you touched on this, communication. Mm -hmm. Transparency throughout the organization is important. I often say the rumor mill should never be how your employees get information that's very valuable to them. Integrity, most people don't think about integrity mm -hmm. when they think mm -hmm. about an organizational culture. Yes. But integrity is so important because it not only impacts your employees, it has a direct impact on who your customers, customers are. are yeah. Right. Yeah. And so when your employees feel like they can't trust you, that demonstrates in how they interact with your customers. You mm -hmm. want me, you could be selling a product. You want me to convince this customer <laughs> that this is a good product <laughs> that I don't work. even believe in, yes. Right? right? Yes. Yeah. It's also important to be aware of the behaviors mm -hmm. to be aware of when you're a leader is it narcissistic behavior mm -hmm. or is it uh, a behavior that if there a mistake happens i don't point the finger at my employees right. i take yes. ownership as the leader yes mm -hmm. that's important as well teamwork yes is extremely work. important extremely. because nobody in the organization is working by themselves. Mm -hmm. So you have to create an environment where teamwork is welcomed mm -hmm. and it flourishes and people are proud to be a part, part of, of a team. Mm -hmm. Also, when it comes to culture, um, it's important to think about who you want to be. Because right. oftentimes yes. we look at our yes. as is and not our to be. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Who do we want to be and what is it going to take for us to get there? And sometimes that means get uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm so tired of hearing people say, 
well, we've always done it that way. Why I'm do we a, have oh to change? God. It's working. <laughs> right. No, it's, it's not, not going to work in 2020, <laughs> yes. something you did in yes. 1972. Right. It's right. just not exactly. going to work. Mm-hmm. And you have to be open mm-hmm. to change mm-hmm. and ask for help when you, when you need we help. Need yep. And also create a culture where, you know, some people feel like you hired me, but you didn't include me. Right, mm. right. Oh, it's not good. just about diversity; mm-hmm. it's about being included Inclusive. in an organization, mm-hmm. which means you have to be willing to give your employees a seat at the table. Mm-hmm. And in the book, I talk about the appreciative inquiry model. Yes. And when it comes to culture, that's important to me because I don't want you to tell yes. me something is wrong. I want you to have a seat at the table and helping me come up with solutions to make things mm-hmm. right. Correct. And that's very important when it comes to building a healthy organizational culture Mm -hmm. like how are you behaving in your organization Mm -hmm. organizational behavior is the root to all of this climate and culture thing how Mm -hmm. are you behaving are you behaving badly and we can look at some of the companies that clearly are behaving Mm -hmm. oh (laughs) yeah they they have good behavior because we see how how their employees Mm -hmm. are happy Mm -hmm. if they're publicly traded we see how their stock (laughs) is behaving (laughs) right we see um not to pick on certain people, my phone was having issues. And <laughs> she asked me what type of phone I had, and I told her, and she said, well, that's the problem. <laughs> so clearly the company that she was referring to, who I will not name, which I actually own stock in that company. Uh, <laughs> exactly. They have certain behaviors that make their customers loyal, which is represented through their employees ability to make sure the technology is where it should be exactly Mm -hmm. and so when i think about what you just said we know that we have a new book cracking the organizational (laughs) climate and cultural code and i want to get to climate in a minute before we have to um sign off but um there's a book I, i i get no um money or benefits from this but i love the book good to great Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they it's twofold so you have a good to great in terms of how just these for-profit kind of organizations Mm -hmm. um, move from being good to great and then you have it for the social sector so Mm -hmm. for the federal government you know public schools and and helping people to understand that and Mm -hmm. there are just some key things Mm -hmm. that you cannot deny Mm -hmm. you know when they talked about this level five leadership and all of these things that that was central to all these Mm -hmm. organizations and companies that were able to move from being good to being great, Mm -hmm. right? And like you said, where do you want to go? So tell us about a few tenets or a few things you think about that will help organizations when they're establishing their climate. Mm -hmm. So when you think about climate, also think about the psychological welfare of your employees. Yes. Um, one of the things that I do for organizations is I do an organizational climate assessment because mm-hmm. I need to gauge where you where you are in the organization. Or do your employees feel safe? Mm-hmm. And do I feel not just safe to come to work because I don't think anything bad's going to happen to me, mm-hmm. but do I feel safe right. to inhale the air that's coming right. out of the vents? Do right. I do I feel safe? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, is it an environment where I can? thrive right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is it an environment that welcomes something that's different from the norm exactly is it an environment that allows one to say hey this isn't working and i want to help you make it better Mm -hmm. and so when we focus on organizational climate as a whole does the organization present itself in a way where every individual, no matter what their job exactly. is with any organization, mm-hmm. yes. has the ability to show up as their true authentic, authentic self, self. Mm-hmm. and excel in the environment mm-hmm. is what. And do they understand yes. that, mm-hmm. <laughs> what the expectations are? Right. And when I, when I do training, learning, I call it, because training says something else to me, but this mm-hmm. whole... Um, culture of learning and collaboration, I always make sure that I'm dealing with every employee, every mm-hmm. level of mm-hmm. employee in the organization, because none of it could work without every Everybody, employee. That's right. And the yes. company thought it was important to hire all these employees. So mm-hmm. every employee, no matter what the level, is important. And so you all know we have one minute left. This conversation <laughs> is so powerful. And, and she started talking about something I wanted to get up and shout about. This whole topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and what that really means, 
right? What it means and what it looks like. And our organization's really serious <laughs> about this. And so the, the ones that are doing well, moving from good to great and great to greater, mm -hmm. they are serious about it. Mm -hmm. And they understand what each prong of that means and what it looks like. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if you want to just end with some party words to our um, um, audience about where they can get your book, if they want to reach you, how can they contact yes. you? So the book is available everywhere. <laughs> Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, your mom and pop bookstore. I released it everywhere. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am The Culture Doctor. On Twitter, it's at Oyat Group, which is my company, O-Y-A-T-G-R-O-U-P, Oyat Group. And at any time, you can reach out to me at Nicole at OyatGroup.com. The company's website is OyatGroup.com. And I welcome any input that you may have, any mm -hmm. stories you want to share about toxic work environments. Because although I released this on Thursday, I'm already working on the next cultural book. Yes. So awesome. <laughs> toxic work environments. And if you want stories in particular that I'm focusing on is how the toxic work environment breed is a breeding ground for our insider cybersecurity threat. Mm -hmm. yes. So if you have some stories you want to share, please reach out. And and I would like to end with that because we know that people don't leave organizations. They leave people in toxic culture. They do. That's right. And we want to thank Walida for always being available <laughs> to um, sit in for either one of us. And so thank you, Nicole, for coming. Thank and you of for course, we're probably me. going to have you back because this is a conversation yes. that requires more than just an hour. Mm -hmm. And thank you all, our listening audience, for tuning Bye. in. Thank have a wonderful in. and blessed afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was good. This is Welcome to Sisters and Company Talking About It Live Show. Hosted by me, Dr. Sharon Cradle, and Sherelle Higgins. We will be discussing intriguing, intricate, inspirational, informative, and intelligent topics with our individual twists and talents. We will present real stories, real solutions, and engage in real talk. So we invite you to be our company every Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock p.m. as we focus on transcendent thinking that will move you forward. You become the company you keep. What company do you keep? Oh yeah, we are biological sisters by way of the south side of Chicago. So get ready to keep company with us and our guests as we talk about it. to Sisters and Company Talking About It live show. Hosted by me, Dr. Sharon Cradle, and Sherelle Higgins. We will be discussing intriguing, intricate, inspirational, informative, and in